ships are navigating from point A to B probably loading here and discharging here in doing that we need a very good safe passage plan who does this passage plan it's the second officer and his passage plan is verified by chief officer as well as master moment we are out at sea there is absolutely no traffic and lookout is posted so shooting this video has no effect on safe navigation This is my second officer, Himel. Who best can explain about passage plan than a uh, experienced second officer? Everybody knows basic of passage planning is APEM, Appraisal Planning, Execution and Monitoring. What you guys are studying in all the books in your colleges and school, we are not going to cover that. This video will primarily be based on practical things, how actually a passage plan is made on board. Right now, we are looking at my communication PC. First of all, we get a voyage orders and proceeding instruction it also explains at what speed and which port you have to go for loading and which all parties ETS to be informed and then agency is appointed and this agent gives us more information about that particular port I forward all this information to second officer and he starts with his passage plan hey, you. Can we talk? the first step of passage planning is First, I have to check in, in this that the load port and the discharge port charts are available or not and they exist. So if I don't have the charts, I have to order the charts as per my passage. Whatever chart is not available or the permit is expired or the permit is not up to date, I have to up to date the, all those charts. Then the planning is started. We have a lot of admiralty publication which helps us in doing uh, passage plan, ALRS which basically tells us what reporting is to be done in which area. Then we have sailing directions which gives us particular information about a port including draft, channel, approach ways etc. These days guys we don't have books, everything is digital and we have it on the computer. This is the main computer of digital publications and we also have a secondary uh, computer with same publications because we always uh, requirement is to have a backup of everything your sailing directions looks something like this when you open a particular port you can see the name and you can read about everything port authorities notice of ETAs what kind of terminals with what kind of uh, depth and draft if the water is hot water brackish water or fresh water all information we get and write down for that particular port For example, right in front of me is ALRS, Admiralty Digital Radio Signals, which will tell us what reporting is required in that particular area. Just zoom into the area you want. Say for example, we want to call this place RR Terminal. All you have to do is zoom into this area, right click and see some other services here. It will tell me what all reporting is here. There is Amber, there is one more reporting, voluntary reporting area. If you want detail about this reporting, just click on it. What reporting, which areas, what is the position, what are the contact details and everything else what is needed to find out a reporting. On top of that, guys, if you have any doubt about a particular new area, you can always consult and get information, local information and requirements from your agents. Even if you don't get, sometimes agents provide that themselves via mail to master. There are two ways to make the passage plan on this. One is a graphical way, one is the listing of waypoints. You can type here the waypoints uh, coordinates like this. Or you can drag. You have to graphically do this. Yeah, but practically I have seen most of the second mates they are doing it graphically because that is more user friendly yeah. and easier way. I have rarely seen anybody, you know, typing in coordinates and doing that okay, kind so of a passage plan. We do like this, we uh, yeah. draw it uh, graphically. Then if we have to do any adjustment like the pilot point, pilot station waypoints that give the exact coordinates. So we put there the exact coordinates on the uh, list so that the waypoint will be exactly on the pilot station. This is the way we are doing. 
And how are you marking all the reportings where to call master? Can you show us any one particular one? Yes, sir. So we have we have to go there planning. We have user chart. So we have to prepare a user chart for that. Vector charts are basically have many layers of information. So you can uh, remove those layers and you can add those layers depending upon your convenience and what suits you best. So here we will have another layer where second officer will mark all his reportings. For example, here we are going to arrive. First thing we do is remove anchor lashings, give one hour notice to engine room. This is normally done at about 22 miles and then the speed of the vessel is reduced at about 13 14 miles but this is in general it will change depending upon area depending upon different masters and depending upon different company policies so we have next here standby engines we have to try out the engines before we go to the maneuvering speed we have to stand by engines then there is contact the port control and the, we have to pass ETA to our pilot stations as per the information we have in our ADRS, 3 hourly, 2 hourly, 1 hourly notice we have to give. Then the pilot we have to inform the, about the ETA, we have to pass the ETA to our pilot station 1 hour prior and the pilot boarding arrangement we have to do as per they have provided us. Yeah, very nice. And what other markings do you do on the chart? We have here no-go areas, we have PIs. On from the land nearest land and uh, the course we are following we have to put the PIs yes. and the guys PI is basically we mark it on the radar a particular heading and a distance so it keeps us very easy to track our vessels if we are closing going close to the shore or we are on the track so that is like a continuous monitoring yes sir and we have some obstructions on chart so we mark highlight them and circle them and write here the keep clear so we have to keep clear of these areas we have no go areas like shallow patches around us so this is not safe for our navigations so we, we mark it and we put it like no go areas we are not allowed to go enter enter into that area we have contingency anchorages if in case of in, in case of any kind of emergency we have to drop anchor we will put drop anchor yes. and this is the abort, abort point over here until this point ship can safely return back but after this point ship will not have enough space and room and depth to return so they, this is basically point of no return which is called abort point is, then we put here the position fixing interval what will be the position fixing and always we put the no go areas for our safe markings for all my new deck cadets, position fixing is very important although EGDIS does GPS position plotting automatically but wherever possible you have terrestrial and radar fixes you are supposed to plot that position according to the position fixing interval marked in your passage plan. For congested and confined waters it will be probably between 5 to 10 minutes. In uh, slightly open waters it will be 15 minutes and out at sea it will be at least 1 hour and 2 hours. So wherever you get chance you have any terrestrial object it is a very good idea to plot your position. You, you, Suppose you have made a fastest plan and I am, I am following it and suddenly you know I am running into danger. So will this exist generate any alarms? to give me some kind of warning before I go into shallow or any navigation hazardous area. Yes sir, we have alert parameters for uh, this alert system. We have shallow contours, safety depth, safety contours and deep contours. This is the standard which you will get on all, all type of EGDIS and depending upon company's policies and UKC policies you will be keeping these, uh, these parameters. but the parameter which generates alarm is safety contour yes sir the parameters which will generate alarm is a safety contour safety contour uh, as per the company policies they will set as uh, some formulas and we have to set this like okay now in this case it is set 16 meters so if my ship goes in an area where there is depth less than 16 meter i will get an alarm how many miles before or how many minutes i will get alarm that depends on the look ahead settings yeah, look which ahead i make settings. yeah we generally will keep the look at settings uh, on at sea in open waters we generally put it in 20 minutes and in congested waters it is 0.1 miles that is one cable 
of look ahead uh, settings we put and this is the contour settings we have like this yeah it distinguish the color of the chart which tells you you know is yes, white is safe blue is shallow and this is the highlighted spot soundings this is whichever is less than our safety depth will it will be dark dark it will blue be and highlighted yes so we know that this area is we are proceeding towards the dangers so wait, yeah, wait. Can you eat? when my second officer make any passage plan or any editing or user display or extra layers of charts he doesn't have to do the same thing repeat on the other egg disk. It is automatically transferred. Both egg disks are independently working, but they are also interlinked for transfer of an exchange of data, information and routes. Another egg disk. On one of the egg disks, we always keep AIO on that is admiralty information overlay which gives us nav warnings and nav text informations on one egg disk it is always on and another egg disk which is normally used for monitoring and position plotting we keep it off in order to avoid cluttering of too much of a data once you have done passage plan on egg disk you have to also make a paper passage plan to document whatever you are doing it includes all the publications which you have referred depending upon your sorry your sailing directions your ALRS, your list of lights, your other publications and whatever information, your charts, correction, week, etc. you have to mention. So it's not just that you mark your passage plan on the EGDIS and it's done. You have to document whatever you are doing. In this passage plan, if there is a ballast exchange out at sea, second officer has to mark that. Is there any other special activity, then he has to mark that also. Once this passage plan is done, all officers are ideally supposed to read it and sign it for understanding and this is also verified by inspectors PSC at a later stage.